All right, very good. I see that is working. I see Melon is there, so we shall start. I check the recording first. Yep, it's working. Excellent. So, welcome to another week. And uh, this week we will be focusing on. Sorry, I had to turn on, off the AC. So this week, our focus is on becoming effortless. And as you know, Tai Chi is about effortless, is about understanding first the physical part of how to become effortless. And then from there, we translate it into how to become effortless in everything else in our life. So for this week, um, I want to do this as a group. Uh, of course, you will do it individually in your, in your home. But I want you to share the experiences with us. Uh, and I'm going to put them on the, on the website as well. And we can, we can share some of the experiences that we have. Um, effortless is the key trained purpose, right? Effortless is synonymous with becoming efficient. With, with our energy, with our life energy. So the more efficient we are, the more effortless we live. And that's, that's a, a concept that comes from many, many years ago. Um, in Chinese, it's called Wu Wei. The Wu Wei means doing without doing or doing actions that are within the, the current, within the flow. And yes, maybe it's philosophical, but I don't care about the philosophy. You know, they say, they say something very interesting in, uh, in, in philosophy. So, the religion is the intellectualiz intellectualizing God. Philosophy is intellectualizing the universe in general, the world, right? And uh, the psychiatry or psychology is intellectualizing the mind. So, what we want to do is not intellectualizing the effortless action. We want to practice, we want to apply it, we want to use it, we want to feel it. So I am not really interested in, in of course, in, uh, in, in thinking too much about it. I'm interested in applying it. So how do we apply it in our practice when we, everything that we do must come from that perspective? And translate it into, into physical movement and stances is understanding where you are and where you're going. It's very simple, very simple. So if I am here and I want to go one step forward, I will be, um, I will be thinking, okay, where do I go? What is the shortest road from A to B? And translated in Tai Chi or in Qigong is, I want to see, okay, I'm here, Qi ball, I go here, then from here to here, What's the easiest way, the shortest way, the way that uses less energy and less resources? And that's what we do in, in general in everything else. We want to do a project. The project first is an idea. So who has the idea? You. You are the zero point. You are the, the source. So that's point A. Point B is where you want to go. So you are here, you want to go there. That's the first thing, yeah? Then you need resources. What resources do you need to go from where you are to B, A to B? I'm oversimplifying it, but that's, that's what we do, right? So how can I do the same thing with less resources? Or how can I do more things with the same resources? It's the same, it's the same in business, it's the same in sport, it's the same in everything else, right? So now let's go back to this week. So this week, last week was digestion. This week is effortless. So how can we apply? And this is where I need your, your help. I want you to think about things that you're doing this week. And you can take very simple things to even more complex projects that you, that you do. We all have different projects. And the more variety, the more all of us as a group can understand what means effortless, yeah. So I want you to take a specific action that you do this week. It can be something that you do every day or it can be a one-time 
action, one-time project that you do. And I want you to think about it. Okay, how can you get there? You always have more options. Find the effortless option. Find the option that is the best for you with less resources or minimum resources that gives you the maximum output. So that's the theme for this week. Now, let's practice. So please take your Tai Chi ball and maybe the Tai Chi ball is um, a good representation of effortless because action. I have the ball, I want to bring the ball here. Now, pay attention to what's happening with your body. When you keep the ball centered, you will be using 50% on the left, 50% on, on the right. I had some comments from the last, uh, last classes that the ball became a bit heavy at the end of the training. And yes, it is very true. The training with the ball is not always very easy. The purpose of training with the ball is to become effortless in our day-to-day -day life. So I will hold the ball here in the class for like 10 minutes. Yes, it is going to be a bit painful, but then guess what? When I leave the ball home and I want to drive somewhere for 50 kilometers, holding the wheel will be much easier because I'm already training my muscles to become effortless in the rest of my actions throughout the day. So the training with the ball first allows us to be effortless when we do Qigong. The more we train with the ball, the more we are capable to hold the stances in Qigong, but also translates into the day-to-day -day life. So everything will be easier. Cooking, uh, writing, yeah? your, your fingers will be stronger, your arm will be stronger. Everything that we do will become better. No more talking now. Now we're gonna, we're gonna train. So I'm gonna put the screen a little bit higher so you can see my hands as well. And we'll start with a simple exercise. Turn to your left and push the ball in front. So we'll do it a bit different than usual. Then bring the ball down. Turn, bring the ball here, push in front. Bring the ball down. Turn to your right, push the ball in front, like you're throwing the ball to someone. Then bring the ball back. So easy, yeah? But we're gonna do it with the counting technique and we're gonna do it with holding the ball. So I go here, I bring the ball to my chest and I simulate like I'm throwing it. And I hold, one, two, three. And then I come back. Bring the ball here, throw, one, two, three, four, five. I bring the ball back, turn to your right. One, two, three, four, five. And bring the ball back. Excellent. We'll increase five, 10, 15, and so on. So we'll one reach to one minute. So relax and come back here and throw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring the ball down, reset your shoulders, and throw in front. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Shoulders relaxation, turn to your right. Throw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Give yourself the chance to relax your shoulders, go up and down. And always try to, um, try to move the joints, but don't underestimate the power of massage and tapping. Tapping the shoulders and massaging also helps a lot, especially when we work with the internal parts. Yeah? Internal, we work with the joints and the internal muscles, the ones that are supporting the joints. External muscles is the muscles that we can see, the muscles that we use for the action. But we work with both. So when I work here is the external muscles, when I hold is the internal muscles. So this is a yin yang exercise. Oh, now we go to 15 seconds. I talk so you can rest more. Here, inhale, exhale. One, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And rest. Rest your shoulders. You notice I'm turning, but from my hips, I'm still in front. I'm turning only from my spine. Yeah? All right, in front. Throw. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And relax. Relax your shoulders. Relax your neck. Relax your lower back. And to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Very good. Relax. In between, lift the ball down and we do some shoulders exercise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Change direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Palms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Change. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And relax again. Very good. We move to 20. So turn to your left and throw. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Relax. And front. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Relax. Relax your shoulders and move to the right. Throw. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Very good. Okay. So, leave the ball down and I want you to close your eyes, place your hands on your dantian and I want you to pay attention to your shoulders now. And I want you to relax your shoulders, relax your arms, relax your neck. Take a deep breath and a deep exhalation. Very good. Okay, so now I have a question for you, which you don't have to answer on Zoom, but you can answer, if you want, you can send me a message after. Is your breathing effortless? And if it is, when it is effortless? Second question. Is your breathing sometimes not effortless? When it's not effortless? It's very important to observe your breath. Because when you breathe effortless, it means you are neutral in your emotions. When your breath doesn't come effortless and you feel heavy on your chest or you feel like the rhythm is too much, then, of course, there is something that is not effortless in your breathing system. Now, the breath translates into your heart. So your heart, your pulse, your blood pressure will be effortless or not effortless. So you see, when we talk about the action that we do, right? We, we, look, we look about, this week, we look about outside actions to make them effortless, but we are Qigong masters, we are Qigong practitioners. We look at the inside effortless as well. So we start with the breath. We look, how do we breathe? Do we breathe effortless? And if you don't breathe effortless, it means there is something going on in your body, your emotions. So. This week, I want you to observe when you breathe. Is it effortless or not? And if it's not, observe again. Remember, if you think too much, that's the intellect. In Qigong, we don't work with the intellect. We work with the feeling. We work with the qi. 
The chi works with intention, not with intellect. You can think thousands of years about the chi, you won't be able to affect the chi. You will send your intention, then your chi will go fast. So the more you think, the less you have control on your chi, the less you are effortless. So you have to stop thinking too much and feeling more, and that will make you effortless. Okay, I give you enough break. So now we go to 25. So take the ball, relax, place your feet on the ground, and I go to my left and I throw the ball. Don't throw the ball, just hold it, yeah. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25. Very good. If you find it really hard, just drop the ball and come back. So let's say if you count to 15 and you're really tired, I'll do it now. We go in front. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And you find it really hard. I keep counting. You can go down and come back. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 24, 25, and relax. Remember, the ball is an instrument for you to get stronger. Don't think about the ball as a painful exercise. Think about the ball as a blessing, because the ball helps you to become stronger, no matter your age, no matter your physical condition. The more you train with the ball, the stronger you will be in everything. Your, all your core body will be stronger. So, right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, and relax. So, twenty-five seconds is already quite a lot to hold 1.4 kilos, yeah? The next one, we're gonna start using breathing, okay? And the breathing brings more chi. The chi brings more power into your joints and internal uh, muscles, yeah? So when you do stances, in the beginning, when you can hold, let's say, for 25 seconds, breathe gentle, don't use the chi. But when you start feeling heavy and you want to go to the next level, you start bringing more chi into your body through breathing, yeah? And you relax and you inhale. You relax and you bring more chi through the air. That will give you more strength to hold the ball. Okay, so next one is 30. Relax and turn to your left and throw the ball. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And relax. Relax your shoulders. Make sure that you don't have any stiffness. Yeah. And front. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Relax. Again, play with the ball, stretch, move your shoulders, and we go to the right. Throw the ball. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Very good. If you did it, very good. If you didn't do it and you tried, very good. If you gave up before you tried, not very good. So try, at least try. Give yourself a goal. Check 
how long you can stay until you drop it down. Don't drop it down, it will break. Just drop it down as in go back, yeah? Keep track of what is your level of uh, strength. Can you do 60 seconds? Can you do 2 minutes? Can you do 10 minutes? Whatever your level of strength is, observe and measure. If you don't measure, you don't know if you're effortless. How do you know if you're effortless in anything? By measuring. So yes, you have to measure what you're doing. Can, uh, I'm going to the supermarket in five minutes. I can go to the supermarket in three minutes. That's better by two minutes, yeah? So that's efficiency in time. I go to the supermarket and I buy a lot of stuff. I go to the supermarket and I buy the right stuff for me. That's also efficiency because you're becoming efficient with your health. So the efficiency in your outside actions will make you efficient in your inside actions, in your body. So think about it. How can you make your digestion more effortless? By eating less, by eating the right food, by eating the food that you need, by hydrating, by making sure that your digestion is, you know, the transit is good. Add things to your digestion to make it better. Add fire to your digestion, add water. Add whatever you need to find the balance. Balance is effortless. In yang, if I have balance between yin and yang, then I achieve effortless. If I have too much yang or too much yin, or too less yang or too less yin, then I can be effortless. So the effortless, the wu wei can be achieved only when I achieve balance between yin and yang. Okay, remember we started in the beginning with yin and yang. So this week we focus on effortless. Okay, enough with the ball. I will leave the ball right now. And I will continue with qigong. So we'll do qigong without the ball. And I'm going to do the same thing. And I want you to feel right now what's the difference between what we've done with the ball and what we're doing without the ball. So we'll do sanjuan on the heart level but I'm going to do it outside, yeah, which is a form of uh, a stance that activates the lungs area. So I'm going to do first left. I turn to the left and I place my hands in front. Please make sure that your arms are on the same level. If I turn like this, you will see, yeah, they are on the same level, yeah. So not like this, not like this. You have to look either in the mirror or in the screen to make sure that your hands are balanced and relax and I'll go straight to the same count as we did with the ball one two three four five six seven eight nine ten relax your shoulders eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty relax your neck twenty one twenty two 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 and relax your hands. You see, now without a ball, it's becoming easier to practice the same thing. So that's what I'm talking about. We need to find ways to make ourselves effortless. Okay, so now I go in front. I throw the ball, the imaginary ball, and I relax. And I count in my mind. You can also count in your mind all the way to 30. You can close your eyes and relax your shoulders. and relax very good now i move my hands i move my <laughs> my body and i do the same thing to the right so palms out turn to my right relax
and relax your arms and relax your body completely. Very good. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing with movement. So this is an exercise for the lungs. Yeah. I bring my hands here. I turn to my left. Inhale and exhale. Bring your hands back and come back in front. Now I'll explain this exercise and then we can do it together uh, several times. We'll do a few sets. So in this exercise, my intention, my mind is to empty my lungs completely from air. So I inhale, I fill my lungs with air and then I exhale, I relax and I come back here. I inhale, I move to my right and I exhale and I come back here. Yeah? So your lungs, we don't have, we lost the capacity of controlling our body because we spend too much time outside. There's a long conversation on that. I think I got to the bottom of it lately. Um, and it's a lot of it has to do with the subconscious mind. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, we are into our mind most times and less into the body. Now, if you think about it, the body is very dense and the mind and the body, they're connected. But we are working constantly on disconnecting from the body because the mind is easier. We can do things in our mind and we forget about the body. So the body gets, you know, gets not very good in the process of, of being in our mind. So why I'm saying that, I lost, I lost the track of, uh, of, of what I was saying. In the, in the breathing process, we don't think much about the breathing process. So we don't think, okay, I'm going to breathe more with my left lung. I'm going to breathe more with my right lung. I'm going to control my blood pressure. I'm going to control my digestion. We even think, I mean, I don't, but many people think that they cannot control their physiological processes. I'm writing about this in my book. Um, I met with a, with a surgeon, with a heart surgeon. And he's a, one of he's the second heart surgeon in the world. And I had a very interesting uh, training with him. We did Aikido a few years ago. And then I had a conversation. He invited me in his house. We had a glass of wine. And he invited me for a nice chat about Aikido and life. And, and I asked him, in your surgeries, do you have... Um, what is the, the... He was doing heart transplants. He is still doing heart transplants. So a heart transplant is a very, very delicate uh, surgery. I mean, it's very delicate, but not from the physiological perspective I'm talking, not from the physical perspective. Yes, you take a heart from a patient, a dying patient, and you put it in, in a, into a transplant uh, organ uh, receiver, right? So it's the physical, he's doing the physical part. Yeah, he's taking the heart, he's stitching the heart, and then, you know, the person has to accept that heart. But the heart has a lot of chi. Not, we're not talking about the blood type, we're not talking about the, the anti antibodies, we're talking about the chi, and we're talking about emotions, and we're talking about many, many, many more things, many more implications of, of a heart transplant. And I asked him, what, are, what is the, the, the level of survival, and what is the level of compatibility? And is, is it just working to take a heart and put it in a body and, and work? And he said that he, his answer was that no matter how good the surgery is, there is a degree of, um, of uh, chance or of faith, of God, of chi, whatever, whatever you want to call it, where he can do the worst operation, the worst surgery, and the patient will leave and he can do the best surgery and the heart will not be accepted by the body. And we talked about how humans can, can uh, um, control the physiological processes in, in the body. And of course, being a doctor, you know, he, doesn't, he couldn't accept. He said, there's no, phys there's no proof that you can lower your blood pressure. There's no proof that you can lower your blood sugar. There's no proof that you can access, you can, you can control, for example, can you control 
breathing with one lung only and then the other lung? Can you control working with one kidney and not the other one? So the answer from the Western medicine and from the Western, not only Western, but the modern world uh, does not believe that we have such an impact on, on our body. And again, I believe that the subconscious and the conscious mind, the separation between the subconscious and the conscious mind gives us that illusion that we cannot control. In reality, uh, the subconscious mind controls everything in our body. But the conscious mind lost control in the battle with the subconscious mind. And for us, when we practice, we want to give this balance, we want to give control to the conscious mind equally to the subconscious mind. So it means that the, when you're conscious, you want to have full control of your body, of your surroundings, of everything, right? But the subconscious mind doesn't allow that. So the only obstacle against you healing, against us healing, is ourselves, is a part of ourselves. The subconscious mind fights the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is always true, is always, is always in control. The subconscious mind works also with your feelings, with your trauma, with your memories. The conscious mind has a handicap. The handicap is forgetting and not processing the things. So you go through a trauma, subconscious mind doesn't process it, remembers it, forms a mechanism. Conscious mind forgets it and then, you know, and then there is a, there is an imbalance between that. I don't want to go deeper into this, but it is part of being effortless. So now we go back to the lungs and what I want to do, I want with my intention, I want to focus only on the left lung when we turn to the left and only on the right lung when I'm turning to the right. Okay? And we do another exercise right after this to control the breathing through your nostrils. So we will do that in a second. So I want you to put your hands up and inhale, turn to your left. Exhale, go down, up, inhale, focus on your right lung, go down, and up, up, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. I don't have to say that when you are on the left, you're turning on the left and you're focusing on the left lung and when you're on the right inhale exhale you're focusing on the right lung very good okay now i want to do an exercise of controlling where do i breathe we'll start with the nostrils but really it's not about the nostrils on or or, or on yeah it's about the entire lungs system yeah so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna press my uh, left nostril i'm gonna block my left nostril and i'm gonna inhale on my right nostril only very slowly inhale and keep it and exhale on the same nostril until all the air is out. Very good. And now change. Cover your right nostril and inhale. And exhale on the same nostril. Very good. Now, what if I tell you that it's possible to do the same thing without pressing on your nostril. So what I want you to do right now, I want you to place your palm in front of your nose and inhale only on the left nostril. And exhale only on the left nostril. The reason I put my hand closer is because I want to feel which nostril is the air transfer going. It's not easy, it's not an easy exercise, but it's not impossible. 
I can do it. After years of training, I can do it. You can do it too. We have similar bodies and you can do it. And you can, if you do this, then you can also control your lungs better. So you can see which lungs breathe more, which lungs has more power. And you can control, especially when you do the subconscious breathing. So subconscious breathing is taking the air out completely from your lungs. So the lungs are like a sponge, yeah? The sponge, it goes all out or all in, all out or all in. The ribs will push on the lungs and will, you know, will, will take the air out and then inhale, they will be, you know, more relaxed. So your lungs will become bigger. So then you have the abdominal breathing, the reverse breathing. You have many, many ways to, uh, to access your lungs. But a subconscious breathing is a very good exercise and it's very it's accessible to everyone. It doesn't doesn't require like you know advanced practices. We have advanced practices too. We can go into that too. But we just do this right now for the sake of filling the lungs. Now I put the left in front and I inhale, exhale, and I press my fingers inside my abdomen under my ribs and I take my air out and I go back and I relax and then I inhale exhale and press and go back relax inhale exhale and press and relax very good okay i want to touch point on a very important uh, point on, on important subject which is i started to talk like uh, like president biden i have to change so i want to i want to change the way i breathe by focusing on the on the on the lungs so when I have pain, for example, one of the ways to take the pain out of your body is by using breathing. So I learned this technique a few years ago and I use it usually to unblock the meridians. If you go to my book, um, I think most of you, if not all of you already have my book. So in my book, there is a, there is a page, I'm just going to pull out my book, there is a page where I put, um, uh, let me see which page, I think it's on the Tai Chi, it is on the Tai Chi, um, just a second, let me find it. So I put a, a picture on the book with all the points that allows us... Is it page uh, 258, controlled breathing? Uh, 258, maybe. I don't remember, but I can check. 258. No, no, this is the Bhagavad Chikong. Just a second. And anyway, I think I will find it and I'll put it. There. So there are points in your body, points on our body, where we want to uh, unblock the energy. So, okay, I found it. It's on page 331. Okay, it's a cultivation exercise called self massage. And basically, what we do, we go on these points, yeah. So, page 331, yeah. Page 331 where we go on these points and we massage these points, yeah? We either tap or massage or we move these points. The idea is that these points, they should never be stiff. And most of them, they coincide with what? With the most important connections in our body. So this is neck, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, hips, spine, uh, knees, ankles, and toes. So these particular areas we should never have pain but if you do have pain or stiffness 
you can use the breathing to unwind, to soften up all these areas. So for example, I'll just take an example, but this, this is something you, you must practice on your own, yeah? So let's suppose I have like super strong pain on my right shoulder, right? And the pain is like, you know, it's not, not going away. I can use the breathing to move the pain away on the shortest, on the shortest way possible. Now, what means breathing from a perspective of uh, chi? Breathing means flow, inflow, incoming chi, going chi, incoming, outgoing, incoming, outgoing. So by breathing more, I bring more chi in my body. By breathing out, I take the chi out of my body. What is pain? Pain is a form of chi too. So emotions are a form of energy. Emotion is energy in motion. Pain is also an accumulation of chi, bad chi, good chi, whatever, whatever chi is there. I want to move it away. So I inhale, I have pain on my shoulder. I inhale, send my intention to my shoulder, exhale, I move it out on the hand. Inhale, exhale, I move it out through the, through the hand. Inhale, I move it out through the hand. So by repeatedly doing this, you will see that the pain starts dissolving. In most cases, of course, not in all cases. There are other, other types of pain. We can go deeper into the pain uh, issue. I really, it's one of, one of my favorite subjects, pain, because pain is something that everybody runs away from. And pain is actually something that we should learn so much from, but I do not believe that we should stay in pain. Uh, but that doesn't mean we run away from pain. We understand it and we solve it and we let it go from the body and we live without pain. Now, coming back to the subject that we had today, being effortless cannot be in the same way with being in pain. If you're in pain, you're using a lot of chi, you're not effortless. So all the, you know, all the famous people that they are so proud of themselves that they are in pain, and you know, and they are artists and they're painting. Oh, but I'm in pain, I suffer, but it's good. I'm suffering for a good cause. That's not my cup of tea. I don't want to be like that. I want to be pain-free. I want to be happy. I want to enjoy my life. And I want to wake up in the morning and have no pain, not being tired and go to bed in the night and not being in pain, not being tired. Throughout the day, we have pain from people, from other things, but I don't want to accept it as part of my life, but I want to understand it understand move it and move away and don't don't come back okay very good i think uh, i talked a lot today i think yes we have a little bit of time to practice so let's do a bit of more on the lungs and uh, i'm gonna do the chi ball exercise to the left and relax and focus on my left lung and I breathe on my left nostril only. And I go back here and I breathe out. I move to my right chi ball and I breathe on my right nostril only. So here it was left, here is on the right. And you will notice in the beginning, it's a little bit annoying to breathe on one nostril only without the help because we're not used to it. But once you get it, then you will see how, how important it is, how beneficial it is, because it also focuses on the, on the correct lung. And go to the left, breathe on the left nostril. And back, breathe out. Right nostril and back. Left, left nostril and back and right nostril and back. Exhale. Very good, and relax your hands. And we will end today with 
uh, unifying the three dantians. So right, lower dantian, hard dantian, and upper dantian. So we start from here, left on top of the right. I don't touch my hands to my body. I keep the hands out and I relax. Relax your shoulders. And as we do this exercise, we pay attention to how the mind and the body work in a different way. So the gravity in my body is right now, the biggest gravity is should be felt in my feet. So I want to go about that. So feel the gravity on your feet, then feel the gravity on your knees, lighter, hips, lighter, because the hips take your body without your legs, spine, the more you go up, the lighter you feel. Shoulders, they have nothing. The shoulders, they shouldn't feel any gravity. It's only the neck and the head. Neck, it's only the head. So the neck should feel even lighter. And then as you go up on top of your head, it should feel very light, very, very light. And bring your hands in front of your lower dantian. Make sure that your arms are round and your fingers are relaxed. And open your arms, relax. Palms are facing each other, so they're together. Relax your body, relax your chest. Relax your knees, your calves, your hamstrings, your glutes and bring your hand together and bring the hands in front of your heart. Elbows, palms, shoulders on the same level. Yeah. Relax more and pay attention to your heart area. And open your arms, make sure that the palms see each other, relax. It's very important to see yourself in the screen or in the mirror whenever you're practicing. So to give you an analogy, I'm sure most of you went once or twice or even more to the gym. So in the gym, when we practice, we have to constantly readjust our posture because we don't want to develop one side of our body more than another. So for example, if I work with dumbbells, I will try as much as possible to work with equal weights on the left and on the right. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up having one shoulder higher, one biceps bigger, you know, so, so we imbalance our body if we work differently. Now in Qigong, it's the same thing, but we work with the internal muscles and we work with the chi. So for example, in this posture, if I'm like this, I'm gonna, not only that I'm, I'm not gonna work correct, but I'm gonna create an imbalance of energy uh, and I'm gonna suffer throughout the day. I'm either gonna be tired or I'm gonna have an imbalance in, in, in our, my uh, organs, internal organs or in my heart. So I want to work correctly. That's why with internal martial arts, especially with Qigong and Tai Chi, 
it's always good to start with a teacher. It's not very, very easy to, uh, to, to learn from a book. You have to learn with a teacher so the teacher will tell you this is correct, this is not correct, readjust your posture. But the best teacher is also the mirror. You can look in the mirror and adjust your posture. And up. Now the arms are in front of your upper dantian. If you experience any fatigue or any pain or anything in your arms, it's okay to lift them down, shake them a bit and come back. But if you can, use your willpower to hold the arms up and open. Now the palms are also seeing each other, if you notice. So the left palm and the right palm, they're facing each other. Relax your neck. And bring the palms in front of you. Please notice that my arms are on the same line. Yeah? So not like this, but on the same line. And I relax my shoulders even more. And now we will do an exercise of massaging the feet. So I don't move my posture. I just very, very subtle move, shift my weight to the left, to the left ankle, sorry, hip, to the left foot in front on the toes. I curl my toes and I go back to the right foot. So I press with my weight in the ground. Relax your shoulders, your neck, press on your right heel, on your right toes, curl your toes and relax and come back. Now we continue with the ankles. So I shift my body forward a little bit and I press on my Achille tendon and ankles and go back, knees. So I feel the pressure on my left knee first and on my right knee. And then left hip, right hip and the spine. I take each vertebra. So I stretch a bit my back and then I start putting it down. First, second, third and you can eyes, you can close your eyes and go all the way up to the last vertebra and left shoulder, right shoulder relax, left elbow, right elbow, left palm, right palm and each finger, so I take the fingers of my left palm and I focus on each one and then the fingers of my right palm And your chest, relax, and finally my neck, I relax my neck, muscles of my face, and relax my hands. You will notice right now that your palms are most probably fully charged. So if you have any part on your body that you're working on the healing, now is the time to put the hand on the healing. So you can place your right palm and your left palm wherever you feel you need some chi. The best chi that you can get is at the end of a qigong session, if the qigong session is worked through correctly and efficient. You should have more energy at the end than you had when you started. And relax. And place your hands on your dantian. And relax your hands. 
And the last exercise that we do today is the volcano exercise. I'm going to explain it one more time. It's in my Tai Chi book. If you have my Tai Chi book, I'm explaining both the volcano and the thunder. So today we'll explain the volcano. We go on our toes, inhale, and we exhale, and we only move the heels, yeah? And then I stack my heels down, and I move from my knees. Then I put my knees, I lock my knees, and I continue with my body. Then I lock my shoulders, and I continue with my palms. So the volcano exercise is moving the chi from my to toes all the way to my fingers. The thunder is from the fingers all the way to my toes. Two very important exercises in, in Qigong, and especially when we get stuck emotions, energy, chi in our body, we can do this. Uh, with a special note, a disclaimer, if you have a headache or if you have a surgery or something, be careful with a, with a volcano exercise because it might, you know, it might, it's, it can be done very intense. So be careful with injuries, how you do it. So you do it slowly. So inhale on your toes and exhale. Lock your ankles, lock your knees, lock your shoulders and then fingers. Again, exhale, lock your arms, sorry, knees, arms, and then you continue here. Very good. Okay. So this was the class for today. I will see you on Wednesday, 11 o'clock. Thank you. If you have any questions, please send them to me on the WhatsApp.